Hi! In this series of videos, we're going to talk about the language of Old English. Um, in the last series, we talked about the culture and history of the Old English-speaking people who brought this Germanic language to the island of Great Britain. And today, we're going to take a closer look at that language itself. Pictured here is one of the most famous Old English literary artifacts, the sole surviving manuscript containing the poem Beowulf. Uh, you can see it says, What ye gardena? In ye are dagum theod kininga, thrym gefrumon, who, the, athalingus, and so on, elin fremedon, of chilled shaving, share than a fire to managam maidem. And this is the, these are the opening lines, of course, this, uh, and uh, this is a transcription of the manuscript. And there's the, the original writing. There's a whole sort of like art and science to um, uh, reading ancient med um, and medieval manuscripts. It's called paleography. Uh, moving on though um, to our discussion, we already went over that there are four uh, dialects of OE. There's uh, Northumbrian, Mercian, Kentish, and West Saxon. We're going to be looking at West Saxon because that tends to be the uh, standard that survives. And this has in part to do with King Alfred, uh, the, the, the great of Wessex, who stopped Danish expansion, saved English political independence, um, restored London as the English capital, and most importantly for our purposes, reformed education and made English a language of culture and learning. For this reason, West Saxon is the dialect of Old English generally studied in modern universities. Um, and it is when you learn Old English, it's what it's West Saxon that you learn. If you take it with me this fall in ENG 591-691, um, we'll be looking mostly at the old at the West Saxon standard. In the same way, Latin was a living language that changed over time, but when we learn Latin, we learn Latin from about the uh, 50 to 100 year window um, in the year from about 80 to uh, BCE to 20 CE because that is that was the period in which Latin really did, uh, emerged as a literary prestige, legal standard, etc. And so it's the same kind of thing with with late West Saxon Old English. So, first of all, how do we pronounce it? Um, the, let's look at the consonants first of all, because there are some differences in Old English and Modern English pronunciation. Um, and the biggest differences are... Uh, one of the big differences, actually, is that the writing system is actually fairly systematic and consistent and predictable, unlike modern English, for reasons we'll, 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 we're going to learn. But um, generally, just as with Spanish or German or French, when you look at a word in Old English, you can guess how it's pronounced. There's, there's nothing like O-U-G-H in modern English, where you don't know if it's off or U or O or O or whatever. So um, C is preceding a front vowel is a ch sound and a back vowel is a k sound. So front vowels are like e, e, a, right? And usually this, um, we have this uh, similar thing in modern English where a c gives you an s sound before an e, a high vowel, or an, a, a k sound before a lower a back vowel. So, you know, a receive but coop. Same kind of thing, except here instead of a s, it's a ch. So the word chosen to choose is chosen, right? Because it's got that e sound, a front high vowel, ch, a front mid vowel chosen. But before u, this y makes a u sound. Um, it's a k. So kuning is kuning, which is the word for king. Um, we already saw that in uh, um, here already, right? Uh, Theod Kininga, king of the people. Um, G uh, is, is G, the G is a G in before a back vowel, as in um, gum, but it's a Y sound. Remember, this is IPA, the J makes a Y sound, not a J sound, before a front vowel, so it's ye ardagum. H is that H, that glottal or velar fricative, so it's hot, hlaford, Hrunting. Now, one of the curious things about Old English is that we have com consonant compounds beginning with H in Old English. We, these go away by Middle English. So, so Hlaford becomes Lord. Hrunting, by the way, is the name of Beowulf's sword at one point in the poem. Uh, what is, hey, what's up, listen up, 
Um, Huam is Hu, it's the same HW thing, and that gets reversed later on and will become WH. So it's the poem begins on a very sort of I don't know if you remember Little John from Little John from the from the earlier two thousands. What? It's kind of how Beowulf begins. Um, so R is an alveolar flap or tap, or R is a retroflex tap or falp. I don't know what a falp is. So it's like a R as the Spanish or German R. So we don't pronounce the the old English poem is a is it's not like a R. It's a R. Right? Um, S C makes the sound sh, ship, as in ship or bishop. This is consistent across Old English. This gets changed later on. In Middle English, SC becomes a s sound because basically um, French speakers take over writing English and that SC already has that s sound. So they invented the SH combination to transcribe that sound, which uh, exists in English. And then we have these letters, the thorn and the f, which aren't in um, modern English, but are in English all the way up to the late Middle English period, and these are interdental fricatives. That is, you put your tongue a little bit between your teeth and you blow th, and it can be voiced tha or unvoiced that, that. Um, so tha means then, that means that. These are the basic, other, otherwise you can kind of work out for yourself what the consonants are. These are the big differences um, the, uh, between OE and modern English. Um, now, one of the key concepts you have to understand when thinking about Old English is the idea of vowel length as distinctive. This is not something that we have in modern English because we don't, all of our vowel, uh, our long vowels all have different qualities than our short vowels. It's not like, so you have the word beat and bit, right? And whereas in, in Old English, you might have beat and beat, beat. So it's like you might have the same quality, but a different quantity. What, what do we mean by this? How, what vowel length? Well, some vowels, simply speaking, uh, simply speaking, take about twice as long as others to say. Um, when I moved up to Canada many years ago, I remember I was playing a game of touch football, and you know how you have to count like five Mississippi before you rush the passer? One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. And up there in Ontario, I'm playing, and they start going one steamboat, two steamboat, three steamboat. And I'm like, what is this? But I realized um, that this is a great illustration of uh, vowel length because the vowels in steam boat take each of those takes twice as long to say at least as the vowels in Mississippi, right? So Mississippi and steamboat actually both one is four syllables and one is two, but they take the same amount of time to to, to say. And um, in Old English, vowel length is phonemic. That is. A word might be different based on whether its vowel is long or short. Um, so, ban, halig, rap, hlaf, which means a loaf, as in a loaf of bread. Bat, as in ordered or commanded. Foot, as in foot. These are all long vowels. And long vowels have the same quality as short vowels, but a different quantity. They take longer to say, roughly twice as long. So here's a little, you can look at this slideshow when you, when you download it and ask yourself, which of these are long and which of them are short as, as a kind of way to get a handle on, on it. Uh, but I'm going to move on here. Um, the simple vowels in, in Old English are as such. Short A is pronounced like modern English, A ah, as in contact, monogam. I'm using words that are, uh, most of them are, uh, when I could find them from that section of Beowulf we looked at, those, those are the ones I looked at. So short A is monogam. A long A is like an ah sound in modern English, is in father, thom, monogam, thom, ah, this, the ligature here, this a and e tied together is pronounced like the ah sound in modern English, cat or bat. So the old English word for father was in fact fadder, fadder. Long, the long ah is pronounced like the a sound in modern English, band, tacom, is to touch, tacom. Long E is pronounced to rhyme with the modern English way. So way, as we saw that already in Old English, way in yardagum. Um, not E, remember, but A. And this remains true for Middle English, by the way. Short I is pronounced like the I sound in modern English, his, 
his. There's some old English for you that hasn't changed. Long I is pronounced like the I sound in modern English machine. Riches is the genitive of, of reach, uh, which means kingdom or rule, and it's actually related to the German word Reich. Um, right. Uh, more on vowels. Short O is pronounced like the O sound in modern English pond. Ond. Long O is pronounced like the O in modern English go. Ond and gedon. Gedon. Short U is pronounced like the U sound in modern English bull. Ungelardum. Ungelardum. Long U is pronounced like the U sound in modern English school. Schulan. Schulan. That is to, to go to school or to school, I think. Uh, short Y is pronounced like the I sound in modern English, will. It's a, that's actually a, um, yeah, will, will. But the long I is pronounced like the U sound in modern English, school, but with the lips slightly pursed. Gekuthnisa. So the long I in Old English has a U sound that is like the, if any of you study French, it's like the U in T, or in German, the U with the umlaut on it. So it's, it's, in, usually in modern English, our front vowels are all unrounded and our back vowels are all rounded. But this is a back vowel that's rounded. So, e, u, so, so there you go. It's, uh, you'll, you'll, you can work it out. Let's not linger too long on this. We also have a series of diphthongs. Short a plus e, short e plus a is pronounced thus half. Remember, a diphthong is a combination of two vowel sounds that glide into each other. Uh, Long e plus a is pronounced theoa, theoa, half, which is half, theoa, I forget. Short i and e is pronounced hil, ye, ahilda, ahilda. So the i and the e don't run together in that word. They're, you basically usually pronounce every vowel in Old English, ahilda. Long i and e is pronounced thus stierda, stierda. Short e and o is pronounced thus eorthon. Eurthon. So, o. Oh, this is a common diphthong in Old English that doesn't exist in Modern English anymore. So you can pause here, review this, look this over again, read the pronunciation guide in your resources, um, and then you can follow along as we practice here. I have included a recording in the um, uh, the, um, the slideshow, so you don't have to listen to this whole thing, and you can just look on and let's hear it again. Let's start again from the beginning. Father Ura, through the air to heaven, see the name of the Halbod, to become the Nericha, the Urtha the Wila, on Eurthon, Swa Swa on heaven. Una, the Dahuamlikan, Slav Sula us to die, and for Yivas or Giltas. Swa swa we for yivath orum giltendum, and nega ad thu us on kostnung, ak alis us of evela sotlich. So that's about it. This is just, this isn't an intensive Old English class. This is just to give you a taste of it and to give you a sense of how different Old English, pheno what Old English phonology is like and how it differs from modern English, the sounds that have uh, stayed the same and those that have changed. And, uh, and to give you a sense, if you want to look at it and, and piece out how it sounds, how to do that. And I got to admit, whenever I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm reading Old English or, or some Middle English for that matter, I just can't help but sound like this guy. <laughs> At least I th think I do anyway. Uh, yeah, tune in to the next video f to t when we talk about syntax and morphology in Old English. Woo! Take it easy.